Hi, I'm JB with Gibco Flex Mold. I'm here to talk to you about how to properly use our Flex Mold products. Flex Mold has been made for 25 years to easily put patterns, repairable patterns, repeatable patterns on plugs to make molds for non skid on boats, tubs, and showers. So, I want to go through some of the nuances of our product and how to use it. Okay, there's two ways that it comes. It either comes as a rubber sheet. This is our rubber pattern, the original that most people will recognize in the industry. Um, and now we have our G4, generation four product. This is a polyester resin that is flexible for applying on our plugs. And this was designed because the rubber wouldn't withstand the vinyl ester resin gel coats for tooling. So we learned that we get a better part out of this, we get less porosity from it, and we can get possibly two and three pulls off of a plug. I'll start with the rubber first because that's what most people know. When you get your flex mold, it's gonna come in a tube like this. When you get the tube, it's gonna have a cap on the end of it, staples on it. And we want you to pull the staples out because when you pull the tube out with the flex mold wrapped on it, we don't want the staples to scratch the tube or the material. The rubber comes with adhesive already on it. In most cases, it's a, it's a pressure sensitive adhesive. It's a tape that's four inches wide. And there are gaps in the tape so that we can roll it up and put it in the tube for shipping. Also, you'll see why it's on in that four inch strip for our application and putting it down. It makes it easier to put down. So when you receive this, the first thing you want to do is you want to unroll it, put it on a flat table, get your temperature in that area to 70 degrees Fahrenheit at least, and put some weight on it so it relaxes. Otherwise, it's going to want to curl up like this. This is probably a year old and it just keeps wanting to roll up because we haven't heated it and we haven't put some weight on it. We had, it would lay flat. So you've got your, your plug ready. It's smooth. It's been sanded to 800 or 1200 grit. You've got your flex mold with the adhesive on it. The first thing you want to do is to make sure that these lines in between don't print through later on is all you need to do is take a paper towel with water. Don't use acetone, just water. And make sure there's no dust or anything in these areas. You wanna make sure there's no dust on it because that will print. What you do is you take this and you peel it back one piece at a time. And like a wave, and I'm gonna use a weight and talk to you about these weights. Like a wave, we're gonna, we're gonna put the pattern down. Going forward, making sure there's no air entrapment. And just for purposes of demonstration here, that's it. That's how I'm gonna do that one. And then I'm gonna take my, my weighted, that's a piece of bar stock that has foam on it. I use just a piece of foam with a vinyl. You put it on there, tape that onto the bar stock. And we do that so that it doesn't scratch when we're sliding it across. But we'll just tape that on there and I'll make it up different kinds of tapes I've used and it's just so it doesn't scratch the pattern. And that's how you should be properly applying the flex mold to the plug. Next step is filleting. So we can make a fillet on the flex mold. We tape off the pattern and the area around it. We can make up a putty and using a back of a spoon or a popsicle stick, create this, this transition or fillet between the flex mold and the plug. Then we can pull the tape 
then you end up with this nice transition. We also have a tool. Uh, one is a 45 degree angle, the other one's a 30 degree angle. Uh, this happens to be a 270 grit, and this one is a 170 to 200 grit. And we have them in different grits, up to 400. And what I would normally do is tape the edge, and then I can take the tool, and just move the tool back and forth to create the transition. And of course it's diamond, so they last forever. So once we've completed that, we have our, our clean part, of course. Then we go to wax and then gel coat. We make our mold off of it. And of course, we get our first part out of the mold and hopefully get a nice clean part. It's important to understand that people that continue to use our rubber products with vinyl ester tooling gel coat don't have great results. And the rubber product that we started 25 years ago sometimes will stick inside of the um, inside of the mold that you're making. You'll need to use a power washer to get it out. Uh, it may tear when you're pulling the, the mold off the plug. And if it does, you're gonna have to power wash it out, but it normally would just come right out. Okay, so that's the rubber. And then we have our G4 product. The G4 is put down the same way. It tends to have um, better properties in laying down and being flat, um, especially when you use some temperature and some uh, heat. This happens to have adhesive on it. When you get it, it'll look like scallops. When you roll it out, but if you let it relax, it'll flatten out and it'll go down beautifully. Um, same application, same bar stock. I did say that this is made out of polyester. You can use a nice pair of shears to cut this with, cut it to shape. It can be cut on a CNC machine easily. Uh, we've tried it with both a knife and a router. It cuts clean. Um, and it, it leaves a really nice edge. In fact, we've even done it where we have the transition cut into the surface. Um, you normally will get two pulls off of this where with the rubber, you pretty much will only get one and you can use any standard release that we use for your plug. Okay, so that pretty much covers our G4 and our rubber male patterns on a plug so that you can get a mold. If you need to go back and repair it, we make the rubber and female that match the male patterns. Okay, so I wanna show you how to do a repair. And today I'll do this demonstration very simply. This is our standard 102 pattern. It's the most popular pattern that we have. And if I drop something on the deck and chip it, or there's an accident or a hurricane and I need to repair the deck, what I want to do is take a router and I want to route only to the bottom of the non-skid pattern itself. Everything else I want smooth and I have to build up just to the bottom of the non-skid pattern because all I'm doing is adding the non-skid pattern itself. So when I do that, I'm going to show you this. This is my female pattern. This is the male deck. So this will match perfectly and it locks in place. And what I wanna do is take it, lock it in place, put a piece of tape on it as a hinge because I'm gonna use this so that I can flip it back. Now that this is locked in place, I know it's gonna lay out perfectly. I pull this back and what I wanna do is, I wanna use what's called a number four Ford cup. And this is to measure viscosity of my gel coat. So I've matched the color of the gel coat. I wanna thin it so that this cup empties in 54 to 60 seconds. I'll know the viscosity is correct when I have that. 
and I want to use patch aid to thin with. I don't use acetone, I don't use styrene because it will yellow down the road. So make sure you're using patch aid for that. So I've thinned it out and what that'll do is allow it to flow easily and it won't have any air bubbles. What I'll do is I'll start by putting my gel coat in here and creating a wave. Just keep putting the gel coat in, creating a wave. And then using a squeegee, I squeegee this out. Now, I failed to mention in the very beginning of this, the first thing I'm gonna do is wax the whole thing before I even use my router to create the my spot. And I'm gonna do a round circle. I'm not gonna use a diamond shape. I'm not gonna use a square. I want it to be round, because that will hide the repair. But you make sure you, you wax everything first, most important, wax everything first, then grind this so that the gel coat only adheres in that area when you're done and any leftovers will blow off or, or clean up easily. And a nice little trick is I usually keep a little piece of Formica around and the Formica fits in between these lands so afterwards it cleans it up. It gets rid of the excess gel coat and you should have a seamless repair. So for larger repairs, if I've sanded off the whole area, I tape it out and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna create a hinge with the material and I'm gonna just shoot my gel coat into here and just keep this wave of material going, making sure that I don't have any air bubbles. A lot of times I'll take a popsicle stick or something and cut it off so I have a sharp edge so I can poke at any air bubbles that show up as I'm creating that wave. We've done full decks with this, 50 feet long, and um, it's worked out beautifully. It takes some practice, it's not that easy, but it will work. Just take your time, be patient, and feel free to call us, we'll walk you through it. There's some other videos that we've done online, uh, on I believe they're on Facebook and on um, YouTube that you can look up that'll give you some other instruction. Our catalog is online so that all the information is here on how to cut the G4. This is a little bit older. We know that you can cut this now with a pair of scissors. You don't have to do it with a router, but this gives you some pretty professional ways to make your parts look perfect. And yes, our G4, for those of you that have been with us for a long time, used to be green. It is now this pigeon blue. And we did that with the help of our friends at Benito because we were finding that people were using green tooling gel coat and couldn't see the contrast between our pattern and their tooling gel coat. So it comes in this pigeon blue color now. Um, this will also talk to you about doing the repairs as I just explained. Um, and then of course, same with, um, with the website, we have a search engine for all the different patterns. There are 66 different patterns that we have and we have, um, repair patterns for all of them. And we also do this in different sizes. You can buy this by the square foot if you like for repair and also for, um, for making your plugs. With the exception of the G4, this comes in full sheets only. And it also only comes in mail for making plugs. Uh, all the females for doing repairs are gonna be in the rubber. So if you have any questions and you wanna know more, give us a shout or go to our website. Uh, Gibcoflexmold.com, and um, we're here to help.